Okay, so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna solve this question here. And this question involves two dimensions. Very important. All right, we involve the X and the Y. All right, we're not just involving the Y or just the X, we're involving both the X and the Y. So the first thing that you need to do with this question is to draw a diagram. Always draw a diagram with these questions. Very important. If you don't draw a diagram, you are not going to get the right answer. Okay, so draw a diagram. We have our object here, and it's flying off horizontally at 10 meters per second, and it's a 100 meter cliff, and this object is going to fly down, and it's going to hit the ground, and we do not know the displacement that it will hit the ground from the place of the cliff, and that's what we're going to be looking for. And so what you got to do with this question or any question involving x and y components is to split up your variables okay, into x and y. Do not try to do this question uh, and not split up your variables. So always split them up into the x and y components. So we know the velocity initial is 10 meters per second in the x and we also know the displacement is unknown. So displacement is unknown because that's from here to there. And in the y, we know the velocity initial here is equal to zero meters per second. And the reason for that is because there's no y component to this 10 meters per second. This 10 meters per second is exactly horizontal. So there's no y component to that. There's no vertical component to that velocity. Okay, so my initial velocity is zero meters per second. So this question exactly should be the same as if I took my rock and I dropped it right off the edge of the cliff, just straight down. And so we should get the same answer both ways, all right? And so we know my velocity initial is zero meters per second. We know the displacement is equal to 100 meters. And we're gonna actually say that the displacement is gonna be equal to negative 100 meters. And that's important because we're gonna say that if our axis is like this, X and Y goes here, we're gonna say that up is gonna be positive. And so anything that's going down will be negative. So displacement is negative 100 meters. We also know um, acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, and so from here, we do have enough information to solve for time. All right, so we're looking for time. And so we look at our formula sheet and you look at all the possibilities we have and we see that we have uh, an important formula here, which is D is equal to vi, which is velocity initial, times time, plus one half at squared. So displacement equals velocity initial times time, plus one half at squared. And so we look at this equation and we're just trying to solve for t. So we go ahead and we try to solve this. Now what we're gonna notice is that my initial velocity is actually zero meters per second here. So my initial velocity is zero meters per second so this entire term is gonna cancel out. Because if I try to type it in there, I'm gonna get D is equal to, well, velocity initial zero times time, that, that term cancels out, okay. So then plus one half A, well, oops, I guess A is, uh, we'll put in the actual value of A. And so the value of A is negative 9.81, so negative 9.81 times T, which we don't know, so T squared. And we also know what the D value is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in a D value here. And the D value is negative 100 meters. So it's negative 100 meters here. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get negative 100 meters equals 4.905 t squared or negative 4.905. So then you're gonna get t squared is equal to, if you divide by 4.905 on both sides, you're gonna get your answer here. And so we do that and let me just type that into the calculator here. So we get 100 divided by 0.5. And so you're gonna get uh, t squared is equal to 20.5. Four, and then we're going to take the square root of that. And so you're going to get time is equal to 4.5 seconds. 
All right, so that's the answer for time. That's very important that you understand how we got that, how we just split up the X and Y components. Do not, whatever you do, try to use information from the Y in the X. Now notice something important here. Notice that in the X you have uniform motion and in the Y you have non-uniform because it involves acceleration. Okay, so now that we have time here, notice that time is a scalar and so scalars can be used in X or Y components. So I can actually take this time and move it to the X because the time in the X is going to be the same as the time in the Y because time is a scalar. It doesn't have a direction. All right, so time is equal to 4.5 seconds. And now I know velocity, I know time, and I'm looking for displacement. And so all you have to do is use this formula, dis distance equals velocity times time. And so you just type it in. So velocity is equal to 10 meters per second times time, which is 4.5 seconds. Notice if you want, the units will cancel out here. And so you're going to get 45 meters is your displacement. And notice this is the x. So that would be the final answer, would be 45, uh, 45 meters. All right, and so this is this value there.